Alright guys, it hasn't even been three weeks since Dragon Age Vilgard came out, and this game is already in some serious trouble. Now I'm sure many of you have caught how recently there's been a lot of leaks coming out of Bioware, Smash JT has had a few of them come his way, and Demion has, and of course we have this Fandom Pulse article talking about how Bioware allegedly has conducted an investigation to find Smash JT and Endymion sources that leaked the Dragon Age Vilgard sales data. Now what this is referring to is the fact that this game has allegedly only sold around a million copies so far. Now while a million copies of a game sounds fantastic, it pales in comparison to the reality that the budget for this game, theoretically speaking, could be anywhere from three to four hundred million dollars at the high end and at minimum two to two fifty. So given those numbers that we have to work with, this game would have to sell probably four to five million units just to break even, which is a shocking number. That being said, Dragon Age has dipped down to where there is only about 18,000 people playing it right now. The peak, the 24 hour peak, has finally risen above 40,000 for the first time in about five days. For five, six days now, it has been below 40,000 players for the 24 hour peaks. Shockingly bad, like I said. So of course, this has led to where the media was once on the side of this game. They came out singing its praises. They were like, oh, this is the best game ever, game of the year contender. This is gonna be the next big thing, right? They were giving it nine out of 10, 10 out of 10, five out of five, saying that this was a definite game of the year contender. Now, we are starting to see them flip-flop and we'll get into that in just a minute. I gotta give a quick shout out to Instant Gaming because they have been a massive supporter of the channel for the last few months. So if you're in the market for some new games, if you don't want to buy Dragon Age, Veilguard, if you don't like that AAA slop, they have a lot of other games to choose from on the site. They've got a 4.7 out of 5 on Trustpilot. They are very reliable. They've got pre-orders available for some of the best games out there. Kingdom Come Deliverance 2, Gold Edition for only $58.77. Of course, I just even renewed my Xbox Game Pass Ultimate. It cost me less than $30 for three months. Hell of a deal. So definitely go check them out. And of course, I have a giveaway link down below as well. Massive thank you to Instant Gaming once again for sponsoring the channel. So when the reviews first started coming out for this game, we saw reviews like this from IGN saying Dragon Age The Veilguard Review, a reinvigorating sequel for the series that leaves no doubt about its place in the RPG pantheon. This is of course by Lena Hafer. Now if you don't know who Lena Hafer is, they work for IGN and this is a biological male LARPing as a female who's a contributing freelancer for IGN with a specialty in RPG, strategy, horror, survival, whatever. This person gave it a 9 out of 10 because, again, representation matters most to these people. It doesn't matter what else you put in the game. As long as you have representation for their own proclivities, they're going to think it's great. So, of course, IGN's Twitter account has now been retroactively, or I guess reactively, sharing their newer article talking about how Dragon Age Vilgard's in awkwardly in conflict with itself, torn into pieces that reflect a sequel to a decade-old RPG and a fresh beginning with no ties to what came before. <laughs> and this is an article that I've seen them share multiple times the last few days, really trying to do damage control for their initial review. And of course, I ratioed them, said yes, and your trans reviewer gave it a 9. But of course, it doesn't end there, because it's not just Dragon Age who is trying to walk back their early praise for this game. We've seen a lot of outlets like Polygon. Polygon came out right away with articles like this. Why the Dragon Age, the Velgard team designed its trans-inclusive storylines. Because disclosure belongs to the individual. Since then, you can go to the Polygon's website, and there are a number of articles picking apart this game, criticizing it for all the things they did wrong, including the way that they portrayed the inclusion of different identities, of gender identities, and trans surgery scars, and all this craziness. They themselves, Polygon, went after this game now and said, yeah, they didn't do a lot of things right. Even the gamer has come out and said, Dragon Age the Veilguard players think that Rook's companions secretly hate them. And we've seen this from a lot of the way that the companion characters have been portrayed. A lot of the dialogue options, it's like, your character is just a babysitter. They don't like you. They don't love you. They don't have any loyalty to you. It just seems like you're there to like make their, their little trivial arguments go away and smooth things over. And the arguments aren't even that big of a deal. They're acting like infants, like toddlers, like children. PC Gamer came out and said the Veilguard is the first Dragon Age game where my companions don't care enough about anything to argue with me. Again, criticizing the writing of this game as being juvenile, amateur, surface level, nothing that goes beyond just complaining and whining like a bunch of spoiled brats. But now we have this article from The Gamer 
from Tessa Cower. Now, Tessa Cower, I'm going to give you a little bit of backstory on this person. I've covered her many times. Tessa Cower is this individual here, uh, a features editor at The Gamer. When they are not playing video games, because apparently Tessa is more than one person, they're lifting weights in the gym or reading in the park, finding them on Twitter, blah, blah, blah. And then favorite games. I love narrative driven games that engage with the contemporary issues. Think The Last of Us 2. Oh boy. I'm most interested in industry trends, diversity in games, and critiquing media through a progressive lens. I don't believe in treating leisure activities as things to excel in. Also, my ADD is bad enough that I rarely finish games, let alone achieve anything in them. And she, he, they, it creature is writing about games. Okay? Pretty disturbing stuff to think about. So, Tessa wrote this article, Dragon Age the Velgard is that friend that's too woke. And then Tessa goes on to say, if you are as chronically online as I am, you know the meme. And as I've been playing Dragon Age the Velgard, I can't stop thinking about it. Originating from a video skit where a woman refuses to laugh at the Four Seasons Orlando baby because there are worse things happening in the world, the phrase has largely been used as an anti-intellectual cudgel against any kind of remotely sociologically critical social media post. It's used to deem people party poopers for caring about things mostly. Well, it goes much deeper than that, personally. Woke in a nutshell is just a Marxist attempt at revising the way we've done culture for the last hundred years. But again, she's going to say it's just people saying that you're a party pooper, apparently. I much prefer the way it's used by people who declare themselves the friend that's too woke because I am that friend that's too woke. I think it's intellectually lazy to complain about people having critical thinking being too woke because they say that your words or actions might be offensive. I am the friend who rolls their eyes when people talk about using ChatGPT to write their emails, the friend who boycotts brands out of solidarity, the friend who corrects people when they misgender someone. People pejoratively call me woke all the time and I don't consider it a mark of shame. Now again, a little backstory here on Tessa. Tessa also wrote an article talking about not being able to look up characters' skirts is a win. And you can see them in this article here from Bound into Comics saying that Tessa Cower attempted to convince readers that not being able to look up characters' skirts is a win. Uh, the same day that Jade King also published an editorial on this, Cower asks, when will gamers stop feeling entitled to creep shot female uh, characters? I'm not sure why gamers feel the need to look up skirts of animated female characters just to get their rocks off. The reaction to remasters or remakes covering up characters' panties is usually that it's woke PC bullshit or censorship, and they're taking a crucial part of the game's appeal away. It's incredibly weird that people feel entitled to creep shot women and young girls in games just because nobody real is getting hurt. This, beha this is behavior that I'm sure we all agree should be discouraged and not incentivized. What is added by giving players the ability to do this, especially while adding in this expressed discomfort of the characters, why do players want to do this at all? Yes, they're just characters, but it adds nothing to the games and instead reflects and potentially encourages misogynistic behavior in real life. So, in this article that she was writing about it being too woke, she goes on to criticize the fact that the game just tries to tiptoe around a lot of sensitive topics, which again, we've seen time and time again, people saying that it just seems like it's written by people who are afraid of offending people. But then she ends her article saying that it is woke in all the wrong ways. Dragon Age the Velgard is too woke, not because it lets you be trans or gay, by scrubbing all moral ambiguity from its characters so that every person you meet is uncontroversial and good, it sucks all the dimension out of its characters, turning them all into yes men who always think you're right. There's so little in this game that could be construed as offensive that Dragon Age's incredibly interesting setting feels like generic fantasy fare, except for the fact that loads of fantasy settings have racism, so it's worse than that. The Velgar just doesn't have what makes Dragon Age good, and what a waste that is. But again, the thing that Tessa fails to realize is that the reality is for most people who exist in the modern day you know, world, in entertainment, in media, is when you see things that are made by people who have an extreme agenda to push from a far left perspective. And again, that it goes back into this woke ideology of needing to have all this representation in media. The first thing that they're thinking is, well, I can't have representation with the black character or the gay character or the trans character and then make them the villain. That would be offensive. So what she fails to realize is wokeness inherently is needs to be inoffensive because they're terrified that representation is going to paint them in a negative light. So again, I'm going to leave this right there, guys. This has been a lot to go through. This, these people, even the ones who think wokeness is good, are now claiming this game is failing because of wokeness. This is absolutely hilarious, and I'm here for it. Let me know what you think about this down in the comments down below, and I will catch you guys on the next one. All right, and if you made it this far, thank you so much for watching the video. Thank you for being here. I do have two channels, Minimal Effort Podcast, as well as my gaming channel. 
I do have a Twitch and Kick for my gaming channel. We do live streams over there occasionally, maybe once a week. And then if you are in the market for a new PC, make sure to check out Meta PCs. Click the link I have down below. Use code TEBO at checkout for a special discount. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you next time.